All right, I'm here at Pure Turbo, and we're looking at a couple of our different kit options for our power stroke today. And uh, I just want to kind of put a couple of the pieces out here so you can get a good idea of what we're going to be doing with our old body style truck. Um, today, <clears throat> we're going to rebuild our TP38 Turbo with pieces from Pure Turbo. Um, there will be a link below where you can buy this kit on eBay. Um, if you mention this video, you get a 10% discount on the kit. It's um, a 360 degree thrust washer upgrade. It's everything you need to completely rebuild the turbo. So we'll be putting that kit and the standard wicked wheel into the turbo today so we'll be doing a full rebuild balancing the shaft on this wicked wheel and then we'll be rebuilding the turbo and putting it back together into the truck uh, for um, for service use uh, we're going to do a series of videos with uh, pyrometer and dyno run on the truck so that you can see what the turbo makes as far as power and EGTs with the stock 1.15 AR housing and the 360 degree thrust washer kit and the um, wicked wheel. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and replace this wheel with this upgraded super bitch and billet wheel. And we're gonna put a 0.84 AR housing on the back of the turbo and replace the 1.15 AR for a quicker spool up time. We're gonna give you some EGT numbers and horsepower numbers on, um, on that setup as well. So we're gonna do a little before and after. We're gonna rebuild the turbo. We've done the EVB modification. And we're gonna go ahead and um, do the wheel, uh, the wicked wheels, prevents cavitation. And we're gonna have it all balanced out and then we're going to run some numbers on that. Then we're going to change out the housing, which is not shown here. And we're going to put this wicked wheel in, or excuse me, this, uh, this other wheel here, this billet wheel. This wheel is um, six fins as opposed to five. In fact, I'm going to take the camera off of the tripod right now. Flat on the countertop, and there are some clear differences. If you look here on this edge, it's pretty much straight up and down. This tip hardly protrudes. If you look here on the same edge, you can see that this tip comes way further out. The top of the blades are much taller. This uh, six pin wheel is definitely gonna spin more air, make more boost and give us quicker spool up times. Uh, but the question is how much? So we're gonna start off with this wheel and then we're gonna run a dyno run. And again, this here is uh, Pure Turbos. This is their proprietary wheel. They have a machine shop turn these out. When you buy off the internet, uh, this is actually what you're buying. You can get this wheel for less than it is anywhere else if you call Pure Turbos here in Oceanside. Again, there'll be a link to this wheel. If you click on their eBay link, get their phone number which will also be posted in the comments you can give them a call contact contact them direct and they will uh, take 10 percent off of any order uh, as long as you mention this youtube video and uh, contact them direct okay so um, we've gone over the difference in the wheel okay so <clears throat> i'm back here at my spot uh, on my workbench the turbocharger here locked into my bench vise and um, I went ahead and broke loose all these 8 millimeter 12 point bolts the whole front comes right apart I'm actually gonna film my as a change up I'm actually gonna film myself taking something apart normally I don't just because it's boring but so, now um, I've got all the bolts out and the case wants to walk. But it's a little good together. So I'm just using this chisel. 
there's a little bit of gentle persuasion. There we go. One. <laughs> that was the lady next door. It's She's showing the house right now. Okay, I had to use a little gentle persuasion because mine was all gunked up and junked up. Okay, so I've already dug into the turbo a little bit. I went ahead and uh, pulled the outer housing and um, expect it for wear. It's nice and smooth. It does have a couple spots here where it looks like um, it's a little scuffed. Something might have gotten in there while operating and gets pinched between the turbine and the turbo and you can get little scuffs like that but all in all this housing's fine okay um, I used an 18 millimeter on the back and a 15 millimeter or no excuse me 5 8 inch deep on the front to pull this wheel um, okay off the shaft here we are right here at the heart of the issue what we have going on this is the uh, 270 degree bearing out of the center of it and we're going to replace that we're going to replace that with this this is a 360 degree bearing you see the difference one of them is going to lubricate the entire shaft all the way around. The other one, not so much, huh? So that's there. Um, after you pull the housing and pull the wheel, you have to uh, pull this off the shaft. What I did was just put a screwdriver back here behind it. You'll notice this piece is actually deep. The bearing rides inside of here. Okay? So, um... I just put a screwdriver in behind it and popped it off the shaft. So it's on there, right? I just took a screwdriver, boom, and it came right off. Okay, now, to get this next piece off, you want to tap it lightly all the way around. When I say lightly, I mean incredibly lightly. great finesse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this wedge in here and I'm not going to hit it like this. I'm going to hit it like this. Just kind of pop it forward a little. It wants to it wants to come loose. They're not like magically stuck together or anything. They've just been through a lot of heat cycles. How you want to do it. You don't want to damage any of these or chip it once you got it on the move. You just want to tap it a little to separate it. Once you got it on the move, the center carrier comes right out. Look at that. Okay, so <clears throat> this is basically in order how the parts come off. Um, okay, so this is basically in order how the parts come off. This cover comes off first, then you pull the wheel off, then this plate comes off. For the wheel, you're going to need <clears throat> a um, 5 8 inch. Uh, what did I use? Yeah, I used 5 8 inch. For the compressor wheel and I used 18 millimeter for the end of the exhaust wheel and I uh, basically put a wrench on each side and bink cracked it loose this wheel will come right off it's not under a lot of pressure underneath that wheel there's four of these um, 
12 point um, 12.8 millimeter bolts that hold this plate on underneath the wheel you pull those out um, basically what you'll have is the carrier with the shaft inside of it still and you'll go ahead uh, the shaft will still be in here like so and this bearing and your main bearing will be on top of it I just went ahead and used this screwdriver and popped it off the shaft right off the front pink and it yielded the bearing and this guy with all that off you can gently persuade the carrier away from the exhaust housing you can see the hollow exhaust housing over here you gently clip clap this piece off once you get that piece off once you get that piece off you're looking at uh, gently persuading this out they recommend that you use a rubber mallet I was too lazy to go get one so what I did was uh, I had the carrier stacked like so with the uh, shaft coming through it I went ahead and put a towel over it and hit it with my light electrician's hammer which is um, you know real lights this is not a heavy hammer and I just went bink bink and it popped right loose out of the carrier and so that's the last piece to come out then and the last thing you're left with is inside that carrier it's going to spit out a few things these two o-rings mate to the pedestal mine look like they're in good shape however um, I'm gonna go ahead and replace those I don't believe my rebuilt kit came with them did it oh it did it did it did it came with uh, both so that 360 rebuild kit is complete it comes with the pedestal seals and everything man that's a great kit so it also coughed up this square thing right here I don't know what the deal is with it but uh, I'm sure when I reassemble it we'll cover it I got these two collars right here um, this one right here uh, this seal that was in here Let's see. If you get a good look at it there's a race right here the seal that was in there I just pulled it out uh, this is the guy right here pulled it out with my knife and um, on okay so I just got back to my workbench from pure turbo now yesterday I opened up my turbo and I had some suspicions that it may have been rebuilt because it already had an aftermarket wheel in it. it had a replacement part that prevents cavitation known as a wicked wheel this is a standard five blade wheel and is not very performance oriented if you want to notice a real difference you're going to need more meat than this but for the sake of the channel I wanted to be able to do some performance type runs I'm actually working with pure turbo right now anybody watching these videos and I probably mentioned this before depending on how many pieces I've cut together now to make this one gets a 10% off and their information will be below in the comments basically what we have here is my old impeller my exhaust impeller and my intake impeller both cleaned and you can see by the grind marks here let me get in close they've both been clean and you can see by the grind marks here and the grind marks on the inside of the wheel and this notification mark here you'll see this witness mark the shaft and the wheel have a witness mark so when I torque this wheel down I don't have to torque it it's already the spec and it's balanced perfectly so they clean everything it's like brand new it's my new 360 degree carrier ring so basically 
this is what you get after you buy the uh, 360 degree thrust bearing kit and a wicked wheel which will run you around hundred and fifty dollars if you contact them and tell them that you watch this video what you do is tear apart your turbo and take them the exhaust impeller and the shaft okay and what they'll do is balance the whole thing out put your new wheel on the end torque it and make a witness mark and balance the whole thing down so that you're ready to go and then you can rebuild it with the 360 degree kit now this is the minimum I recommend that you do if you buy an old body style Ford you're going to be looking at a truck with 180 to possibly 300,000 miles on it the turbo is oftentimes ignored until it gets to failure so you're going to want to do this right away not to mention if your turbo hasn't been rebuilt with a 360 kit you need to rebuild it with a 360 kit so this is the basic that uh, this is the basis this I wouldn't I would recommend doing all this plus the EBV delete while the turbo is off the truck for any reason Oh yeah, I want to talk about this book real quick. Um, this book here, this Haynes Tech Book Diesel Engine Repair Manual. Um, don't buy it. It's junk. Don't buy this book. It's trash. It's a waste of $26. I thought there may be a couple useful tips or diagrams in here. There's nothing in this book that's worth a shit for your OBS Ford. So do not buy it if you see it at O'Reilly's or whatever I am however looking for a good manual for this truck and it's gonna it's appearing like an original Ford international or an international t44e manual for this truck is gonna be um, uh, like an eBay order only type of item but uh, I'll keep you posted on what manual I end up being happy with I'm gonna try so um, on some of these I use this long half inch breaker bar um, I use this shorter 3 8 inch breaker bar as well often. Um, this is the 12.8 uh, millimeter socket that takes almost everything apart. Um, I did use this half inch ratchet a couple times. Um, I use these extensions. Uh, let's see, we have the uh, 5 8 socket for the compressor wheel, the 18 millimeter socket and the reducer on this uh, big half inch bar right here. I used my light electrician's hammer. I used my uh, my three quarter inch cold chisel. Uh, I also used my three eighths inch ratchet and a long dog sticker screwdriver. I used my my pocket knife here to pull out a couple seals. Uh, so that's basically it. You need a, you probably don't even need all these tools. Um, uh, or you could need them all, depending on how stuck all your bolts are. Um, this has seen a lot of heat cycles, especially if your turbo needs to be rebuilt. I guarantee you, these bolts will um, will all be stuck. Mine were pretty loose because they were probably sprayed with WD. They have been sprayed with WD-40. I've been spraying them with WD-40, so all my bolts were pretty loose, and um, you know. Uh, came right out uh, my turbo's obviously been rebuilt uh, this wheel is an aftermarket wheel this is already a wicked wheel it's like the one we picked up today uh, it does have some scuff marks on the back of it though it does have some scuff marks on the back I don't know what that's about Let me get in closer on that I don't know why it's all scuffed up in that section but I'm gonna go ahead and replace the wheel and put the new wheel in anyway and the 360 degree kit and uh, I'll give you an in-depth reassembly here uh, in a few minutes. Okay.